everyone, and welcome to the Mugen 64 Direct. We have an exciting for you here tonight, lined up with all sorts of surprises, announcements, some retrospectives on older characters. I mean, I already said surprise. More things you wouldn't expect. Kind of the same thing. Uh, we have. We've got a lot. We've got a lot to look forward to here tonight. Uh, and I hope you're all excited for something I've put a lot of effort in. Maybe you think you're safe. Maybe you're dreaming of heaven. Maybe you think it's the last horror of what's the matter. Suddenly out of the dark. Somebody using power. It's all a corrupt you and all of you and ever. I'm dead from the video cave. Dressed in white, no way to escape. If you see it, sure got a Um, hello. Welcome for real to the actual beginning of the Mugen 64 Direct. It's so close. I'm so close to recognizing the sound, but I can't put it together. It's the credits theme from Sadako vs. Kayako. Hello, welcome to the Mugen 64 Direct. Uh, if you're unaware of the Mugen 64, is it's a tournament I'm doing with 64 computer generated character. Wait, that's wrong. The characters are not computer generated. You can tell I, I had that ready and now I'm shooting from the cuff. Uh, 64 computer controlled characters in Mugen as I load it up. Dunks immediately started drinking water as, I, as soon as I turned the mic on for real. <laughs> How did the song get so ingrained in my head as like an all time classic? Dude, I listened to that song at work. That song's a banger. Anyway, hello. That, that was Sadako. She is the 32nd character revealed for the Mugen 64 tournament. We are at the halfway point officially. Um, I would like to start this out by saying, I, I like to give credit where it's due. As technic that character is technically not Sadako, which is why I put her on the direct so I could explain this. That is actually an original character someone named, ma na uh, made, named Ella which is based off of Onryo, like Sadako, Samara, etc., uh, and has a lot of references to those characters. For the purposes of this tournament, I just changed her name to Sadako and will be referring to her as such. Uh, but I would like I wanted to give credit where it's due that someone actually did just make that entirely original. But we're gonna we're gonna go as is. Hi, as I'm talking about things here today, we're going to have characters uh, from the tournament fighting in the background. I'm kind of just going to go in alphabetical order of them beating up Kung Fu Man, so that will be your background video throughout the course of this direct until I have more reveals to give. So all of that being said, which one of these is the... Is it this? It is not that. Is it this one? It is that one. Why the Kung Fu or let the man live? He's really good at letting people get their shots in, okay? I love ovens. Anyway... Hi, yes, I have many reveals for you here tonight. We've got character reveals. We have Doomsday's repla replacement, as the polls decided he would be replaced. If I need to lower the audio, let me know. I haven't really tested Mugen audio that much, especially with this mic. Uh, this is a Amaterasu. We're going to talk about the characters a little bit as they come up. Uh, Amaterasu was a character chosen by ChatGPT. ChatGPT also recommended characters such as Travis Touchdown... And, uh, what did they say? I think they said Shell from Portal. But unfortunately, uh, those characters do not exist, so I was unable to use them. Bro, was returning from a fishing group got jumped by a dog on a stormy night. 
Uh, Amaterasu is okay. I think Amaterasu would be more interesting if two characters before she was revealed, I hadn't revealed Smile Dog, which is like the same gimmick but worse. Really, she overshadowed Smile Dog, but you know what? I gave people the vote to replace Smile Dog if they wanted to, um, and they chose not to. So that's how it is. We're actually gonna we're gonna move on from Amaterasu. There's not a whole lot to look at with her. Uh, this next character we're showing off was submitted by Frosty. Some some people got to submit characters here. Uh, Frosty submitted the arcade cabinet. We could get Dog v Dog. Absolutely. Uh, Frosty submitted the arcade cabinet. Frosty's been going wacky mode with the submissions. Uh, by the way, everyone, in terms of the people that got submissions, where you didn't have to, like, get people to rally behind you for them, Frosty is still sitting on two of his submissions that he hasn't given in, and my good buddy Mothman also has one. Edgy is now playing Lethal Company during the Direct. I can't believe Edgy's missing the Direct. Everyone go to Discord and hit at Edgy, you're missing the Direct. At Edgy, why are you playing Lethal Company? You're missing the Direct. I want to want to open the Discord and not be able to see anything in the War Room chat except that. Glass was ChatGPT's second choice. Thought of Shell, but it was not cooking. Yeah, there is a Glados character, but it's like a mini game style boss fight, and the CPU doesn't really work for it. Um. Anyway, what the hell is this? I have not seen this move. You're gonna see some stuff I haven't seen yet. By the way, some of these characters you see here, I haven't balanced them yet. So some of these characters may look way better or way worse than you think would be fair. That just means I haven't put them through the, the balance testing yet. So you don't don't be alarmed if you see someone you like doing really bad or someone do killing Kung Fu Man in two hits. Because I just haven't, you know, gone through the effort yet. Anyway, Ben 10. Uh, he's a classic. He, you know, he, he would have been banned if I didn't learn how to adjust people's stats. He's still kind of stupid. He's pretty broken. Sometimes he literally glitches. Bin is the literal reason we're going to have to have the rule that if you glitch out the fight to where the fight cannot be continued, I am going to restart the fight, but you're going to be given a strike. Three strike. Like, we're going we're gonna to decide which character whose fault it is that they couldn't, like, which character caused the fight to break? They get a strike. If you get three strikes, you're fully eliminated from the tournament. Binton without balancing would have been the heavy favorite. <laughs> Listen, I know he looks overpowered now, but that's because he's attacking a poor coughing baby known as Kung Fu Man. Anyway, Binton's got a lot of stuff. Bin Wolf is what breaks the game. Bin, the bin Wolf is the, the fight might break alert. Okay, he changed out of Bin Wolf. I have seen him use every alien now. I've seen him use Alien X and Way Big. I've only seen him do Alien X twice. And it honestly wasn't that impressive. Way Big was way scarier. Uh, anyway, we got character reveals tonight. I, I'm like, I'm speed running. I'm on a timer here. We got a lot to get through. I don't want this running much longer than an hour. So you're going to hear me talking a lot. What's that COD zombie noise? Dude, I don't know. I guess it's old. It's Who else is on here? Who's, who's the next one I gotta pull up? Ah, Chowder. Chowder, Cartoon Network classic. I love Chowder. It's a good show. Oh, that's the COD zombie noise. Sorry, I thought you said, what's the COD zombie noise? Anyway, we've got character reveals. Like I said, Doomsday got replaced. We're gonna find out his replacement pretty soon, actually. Uh, I have some big news rev uh, regarding another character in the tournament. <laughs> Edgy's here. <laughs> Cyrano Sweet. Uh, a Chowder, I think, was the Thanksgiving reveal. I wanted to do a variety of things for the Thanksgiving reveal. None of them really worked out too well, and I ended up just panicking looking for any food-based character. I found this Chowder, and I was like, actually, this is kind of good, cool as hell. I can't believe someone made this, so here's Chowder. Is Kimmy still adding Edgy in the Discord? I'm getting the notifications. So why did you why did Kimmy phrase it like the song? Why did she say it's going down for real? Anyway. Uh I've got a we this is QA also. There once I'm once we get through a couple reveals, chat, it's your time if you want to ask any questions you want uh involving the tournament behind the scenes or not behind the scenes. I will answer the questions as best I can. 
Dunks just coughed at me. Clearly, he's a he's a real sussy son of a bitch. I don't know why I called Dunks that. I'm gonna be like, there. There's times where I, I've got a lot to say, and I'm like, okay, I gotta crunch it in to make sure we get all the info. And then there's gonna be times where I'm stalling a little bit because I'm not sure what it is, what we have to say. But we got a lot of characters to get through. Um, I don't know if I'll have time to show off every character, but we're gonna show off most of them, if not all of them. Chowder definitely looks better against Kung Fu Man than I thought. I didn't mean to turn the screen black there, but anyway, here's Cinema Roll. Cinema Roll. I've even been talking about what most of the characters are from. Cinema Roll's a Hello Kitty character. I think voted the most popular Sanrio character in a poll they did in 2020. I found that poll recently. Cinema Roll was actually added to the tournament before I found that poll, but I found it very recently. Uh, and I think Cinema Roll was like the number one voted like most popular Sanrio character. I think number three was like Caro Caro or something. I don't remember who number two was. Ah, oh, number two might have been Pom Pom Purin. I don't. It's 15. Have some cake. You just beat the shit out of Kung Fu Man. Cinema Roll does have a canonical kill streak of like 60,000 people or something. It was. It's. It's no longer the most effort I put into. Oh, I forgot he did this. I don't think he did that in the character reveal, so I shut up for it on this one. Cinema Roll's good. Uh, I, I tried to be unbiased with the characters. I don't want to, like, put too much weight behind a character, because I know my luck. I'll be like, oh, this character's a menace. It's a threat to society. And then, like, the character will double tap, lose 0-2. Oh, and, two. and uh, you know... I, Cinema Roll is the hardest one for me to be unbiased for. Just because I think Cinema Roll being an absolute monster is really, really funny. But speaking of absolute monsters, as stated multiple times previously, it's time for our next reveal of the night. I do have a timer with me going through these uh, in front of me. It's time for our next reveal of the night. Uh, this one is one you all know about. You just don't know who it is, but you'll probably be unsurprised. Uh, Doomsday was bad. People did not like Doomsday. They did not like Doomsday or Smile Dog. So I put up two polls on if Doomsday and or Smile Dog should be replaced. Uh, with 75% votes for no, people voted to keep Smile Dog. And with, I think, 80% votes yes, they voted to replace Doomsday. So I have for you here now the character that will be replacing Doomsday in the Mugen 64 tournament. Uh, I don't remember what entry number Doomsday was, but here's your new one of that. Let's see it. And I mean, <laughs> folks, where's the- Michael. Psych! That's the wrong- Michael. Oh! Anyways, yes, unsurprisingly to anyone in the know, uh, I'm just going to replace Doomsday with General Zod. Uh, is that Pokemon? It's Michael! We have simply replaced Big Michael with Regular Michael. There are several General Zods. Um, this one is actually... You know what? I'll go ahead and show him off now while we're talking about it. I guess I should have shown off Sadako early, too. I had to really debate, by the way, from a character... Because my, my character select screen is in alphabetical order. I had to really debate between if General Zod is put in the G's or in the Z's. Uh, I ended up going with the Z's. Uh, this is specifically Man of Steel, General Zod. Uh, again, have not balanced this at all. I think this is just a resprite of a Superman character, but it's you know it's good enough. Anyway, we're, we got uh, we got General Zod. 
There's your Superman rep. We've replaced Doomsday with him. He's, he's Superman. He's, he's evil Superman. He does evil Superman things. His laser is really weird in that it actually isn't as long of range as you would expect it to be. That move is cool, though. I do like that he does that. Honest to God, that him picking them up in the air and throwing them down was kind of like what sold me on using This Is Odd. Because I was like, yeah, this is, this is Man of Steel's Odd. This is like the only reason I would care about this character <laughs> is because of the funny movie night references. Oh, I didn't start the timer. F. This is listen. This is gonna end up running slightly over an hour. I apologize, but we're still pacing it somewhat well. What's that hitbox? Not great. That's what that hitbox is. Yeah, they're at Burger King. I do have. I want to say 45 stages currently downloaded. Maybe more. I definitely will add more before the tournament officially starts. I tried to. I try to make sure every character has a stage that somewhat, you know, represents them. That's not gonna happen. Some characters, it's just not doable. And that's okay. You can't have a stage for literally everyone. But I do try to find a stage for everyone. The Michael the Michael Fassbender image that just says winner is really funny. Sometimes they're bangers like the arcade. Oh, absolutely. What's funny is I think I already had the arcade stage before you chose arcade cabinet. Um, that just worked out really well. Some of these stages I just already had because they're good stages. Anyway, time for Edgy to start popping off in chat because here is Cyrano. Uh, Cyrano was not submitted by anyone. Edgy just really wanted Cyrano in. And he got a, a mild amount of people to rile, rile, rally behind him. And it was very early in the tournament. So I was like, yeah, you know what? From my, my very simple understanding of Toho, Cyrano's entire gimmick is the number nine. So she may as well be entrant number nine. <laughs> very. Kung Fu Man got stuck in the void. Where is he at? Anyway, Cyrano's hanging out. She's pretty cracked. Cyrano, I honest to God, I'm not going to say Cyrano sweep. I am being unbiased. Cyrano, I think, could very well be a top tier. She's got some crazy stuff going on. She does have the, like, 1,000 needles move or something that does, like, 80% of your health. But she has to charge it up a lot. So it's really like a it's it's a round closer more than like a like a, a match closer you know you use it at the very end to seal the deal. Is this before or after balance? Cyrano has been balanced. This is this is balance patch Cyrano that you're looking at right now. I don't know anything about Toho. I think that's like the extent of what I have to say about that one. It's a good character. Bro, come down. Yeah, her flying is kind of cracked crazy. Okay, this character is... Next one is Deadpool. It was submitted by uh, Zack. Zack actually originally wanted Wolverine. And I kind of haggled him to Deadpool. Because I was already kind of juggling with the idea of maybe squeezing Deadpool in. Because right now, character slots, I have some open ones. But it's getting really tight. So I got to really think about everyone I put in. Uh, but I was like, okay, listen, you can have Wolverine, but, you know, do you have a preference between, like, would you be cool with Deadpool? I don't think I want to do both of them. He was like, I'm fine with Deadpool. And I was like, okay, sick. <laughs> I already had, like, Deadpool downloaded and everything. It was just a matter of figuring out which Deadpool I wanted to use. Ultimate Zoner. He's got really good range and close up. This is, uh, I'm not gonna say this for every character, I, but, like, let me put it this way. Every character that was revealed before Gooper Blooper has been balanced. Gooper Blooper and on have not been balanced. In terms of actual character reveal, not the order I'm showing you them now. Uh, because once I spent 48 hours making Gooper Blooper, I, uh, I haven't had a lot of time to be doing the character balancing, because that's... It's a very time-consuming process. It's a lot of just watching CPU fights over and over again. You know, leave, going to the desktop on my Steam Deck, adjusting stats, re-watching all of the fights again. There's Doomsday. He will not be here. Oh, Glover. Glover is the next one. I'm trying to get the Deadpool 3 crossover. Listen, we need the sponsorships. Do you know how much money it cost us to get Glover in here? We had to steal Glover from Smash. I had to go to Sakurai's house and beat him in Mugen to get Glover added to the Mugen 64 tournament. And he sucks. 
It cost me one hundred billion dollars, and Glover sucks. This is post buff. This is post balance patch Glover, by the way. This is the best I could do with him. Couldn't beat him in his own game. No, I did that to get PD put into Smash. It's like a fifteen. <laughs> I I beat Sakurai in Smash to get PD put in as a stage hazard. He beat me at Mugen to get Glover put in, but he sucks. Sakurai handicapped. I put too much effort into the Glover reveal as well. I don't... I'm, like, trying to think if there's anything other than characters I need to talk about. Like, I have reveals on, like, the timer, so obviously I talk about those as they come up. Uh... Oh, I, the, I, I guess I've never explained the actual rules of the tournament. This is, like, a great time to do that. Um, since... Well, Glover's about to win. I should do that during the next character. Talk about our sponsor for today. Uh, sorry, this one's coming straight out of pocket, and I do mean that literally. I will probably be sued into oblivion for some of the reveal choices I will be using. Now, you may have noticed, some of you eagle-eared listeners, um, that I used the Man of Steel theme by Hans Zimmer for when I revealed Doomsday, but I just used, uh, Super Smash Bros. Lifelight for General Zod, um, and that's because every General Zod theme sucks, so that's why I didn't do that. Here's a Goro, was it Gojo Satoru? I don't know this character. I know he's from Jujutsu Kaisen. This was uh, my friend Ian's submission into the tournament. He's about to go ape shit. Anyway, this is a great time for us to talk about the rules of the tournament really quick. Uh, yeah, our sponsor, the DMCA, the FTC. So the tournament, 64 individuals. It is going to be double elimination. Uh, I will probably... See, it's tough. I don't know if I'm going to randomize the competitors every round. I might. It's up in the air. Either way. It's going to be a double elimination tournament. So you, once you lose, you go to loser's bracket. Once you lose in loser's bracket, you're out of the tournament. Um, at the very end of everything, the winner of winner's bracket, so the person who goes undefeated will face the winner of losers bracket so the person who loses once and then survives all the other losers those two people will face off in a grand finals but it will be a best two out of three set so like right here the matches are two out of three rounds uh they would do this like let's say this was for real gojo beats kung fu man 2-0 obviously then they have to do another set of fights and if Gojo wins that, it's over. If Kung Fu Man wins 2-0 or 2-1, then they go to a third one. You get what I'm saying? I have no idea what this is. I've never seen this before. What is happening? Holy crap. What? What? <laughs> Why were there a bunch of Gojo clones down there? That was crazy. I think he's dead, gamer. Well, that was uh, that was certainly interesting. Holy crap! You can hear the alarm when it goes off. Dismiss. <laughs> well, that's that's your alert to know that another reveal is coming. And let me let me say something. You know, some of you, some of you eagle-eyed viewers pointed this out. That was quite the. Uh, Quite the strange stage they were on. Maybe maybe some of you noticed the stage they were on, maybe you didn't. Well that stage is actually a little bit of foreshadowing. Because this this is a Mugen Direct. You know? It's it's definitely its own creative thing, not copied off anything. But let's say hypothetically there was some kind of other direct who might try to sue me for copyright infringement. Well, certain directs. They're known for having certain things. There's something you can always expect to find at every direct. And would this be a real direct if we didn't have one of our own? So let's take a look. Here, you'll manage a farm. Farm Simulation RPG. Farm Simulation RPG. Farm Simulation RPG. Hello, I have a new farming game.
Anyway, I'm sure 99% of you have no idea what that was. Um, that is the farmer from Harvest Moon. That was Frosty's other submission so far, along with Arcade Cabinet. The farmer from Harvest Moon is here in the Mugen 64 tournament. And we can go ahead and pull him up for a little more showcasing of him. Uh, he's pretty good. He does. He has crack dodging. He does have spot dodging. It's a little insane. I don't know how much it came across in the uh, reveal video. His little move where he plants the seeds on the ground are actually a ranged attack. The seeds will fly at the opponent. They can cover almost the entire map. There it is right there. It's the most spammable thing ever. It's actually insane. But yeah, here's the farmer from Harvest Moon. We got a farmer in here. Frosty's got two submissions left. Mothman's got one submission left. By the way, I, uh, you see these fights here, they're, they're best two out of three, like, rounds. I haven't checked if I'm able to change that, like, if I can choose the number of rounds they do. Uh, if I am, I might make the tournament three out of five rounds, where you have to beat your opponent three times to win. If I can't, then it's gonna stay two out of three, but that's something I haven't, like, looked at yet, because I've been busy with other stuff setting this up. But, uh, if I can make it three out of five, I will. Just to give everyone a chance to put up a fight. You gotta really win-win to make it past the Mugen 64 tournament. This stuff is serious. I forgot to start the timer again. It's okay. I just took a minute off the timer. But yeah, uh, Farmer's Neat. It's, it's definitely an interesting character. Is definitely our farming rep. I don't know what he's doing. But there we go. We gotta go in. It's so fucked. It's full range projectile and a trap. See, I think he chooses. It's like two different moves. He can set them as a trap or make them a projectile. But it, it, he really just has a whole literal bag of tricks up his arsenal. I don't know if I would call him a top contender. Because this, this hasn't been balanced yet, so things could change. Right now, he definitely, you know, it takes him some time to get cooking. Uh, and he's, you know, he's taking some damage himself. He's trap cornering. He is a little bit of a scumbag. That's definitely for true. Um, I think I've covered the basics, you know, we, we're, we're going through reveals, I've talked about the rules of the tournament, um, I guess it's Q&A time, I'll talk about each character again as we still pull them up, but I guess if any of you have any questions relating to the tournament, now's a good time to start putting them forward, or, you know, question about the tournament or questions in general, I'm not, you know, we're here to fill time, we're here to look at characters. Can you finish this, Farmer? I need, I need to prove that you can actually beat Kung Fu Man before we turn this off it's gonna be real embarrassing if one of the entrants in the tournament loses even a single round of kung fu man live on stream it's gonna be like massively embarrassing okay good farmer farmer did it farmer cleared who's up next oh my son the man who i actually have things to say about here's gooper blooper if you watch the reveal uh, I wonder if there's any dolls in this cutscene. What the hell? What does that mean? No, the Burger King is flooded! Anyway, here's Gooper Blooper. Uh, again, this is, uh, the Shining Force Kraken. Made by, I did forget his name. I want to say it's Unknown something. Or, no, it's Phantom something. Or something Phantom. Phantom of the Code? I think his name is Phantom of the Code. Anyway, he made the Kraken from Shining Force. Um, and I spent 48 hours re-spriting him, palette swapping to look like Gooper Blooper, because I love Gooper Blooper. Monokuma dolls. Ah! I understand what you're saying now. Who's currently on Fraud Watch? What the hell is Fraud Watch? What could this possibly mean? I'm not in the know. I'm thankful for the crack dodging. Yeah, Farmer really wouldn't have much going for him if he didn't have the, the spot dodges. Gooper Blooper looks broken. I would like to remind you, A, he hasn't been balanced. He's the one I'm currently balancing. He looks really strong, but like, let me, let me show you. So, oh, shoot. Let me slander Gooper Blooper real quick. He looked pretty powerful there. Let me give you a quick uh, Gooper Blooper versus Hatsune Miku fight so you can see how uh, Gooper Blooper kind of gets hard countered a little bit. Gooper Blooper takes damn. By the way, Gooper Blooper... Gooper Blooper's tentacles have health, and he can only summon a limited number of them. If you take out his tentacles, he can't summon them for the rest of the fight. And then he just has his head in his bubbles. Anyway, Miku... I'm about to be proven wrong. Never mind, there it is. 
Yeah, Miku's like spin attack just kind of hard shits on Hooper Blooper unless he hides. But either way, he really can't. This is like the best he's done against Miku since I started. And balancing, I kind of just got to accept that some characters have hard counters. Uh, because I, I kind of like, I look at the focus testing and I'm like, this guy just loses to Hatsune Miku. And I don't know like who else he would hard lose to. Maybe no one else but Hatsune Miku. Maybe, you know, there's a few characters he would hard lose to. And that's the look of the draw. The tournament, a lot of it is about matchups. Uh, she's a Jesus. She's walking on water. No, she has a little raft under her. See, there's a little raft she's standing on. It's a fair fight. Thank you for your cameo, Miku. See you never. Um, that's a gooper blooper. You cut it off. You don't need to see your winimation. She's not here. She's not. Was her big reveal? What's the do? There's nothing for her to reveal. All right, Miku just showed up to beat up gooper blooper for me. She's not, she's not, this isn't a, tonight's not about Hatsune Miku, alright? This isn't the Hatsune Miku stream. I do love the platform under Kung Fu, man. Dude, the Shining Force Kraken is a great character. I massively respect it. Um, and I thank that person for making it so that I could sprite it into the world's greatest gooper blooper. Sorry, I have to catch up on chat. I got cut off slightly. <laughs> She's the secret final boss, like Giga Bowser. Oh yeah, Green Lantern was submitted by Jimothy. This was Jimothy's submission. Uh, I don't. Green Lantern's another character. I don't know anything about him. I watched the Ryan Reynolds movie with Kimmy. Um, that's my extent of Green Lantern knowledge. He just, I think he just missed his super. I'm glad Kung Fu Man could get a couple jabs in there. Rainbow Attack. Mission accomplished. Oh shoot, he's over. I'm, I gotta hide the menu, by the way. <laughs> I'm making sure you guys can't see the menu, because I got a lot of characters set up here. Um, next up is one of Ultra's four submissions. Uh, which is, of course, the Green Ranger. The Green Power Ranger. This is, of course, not a reference to the Power Rangers. This is a reference uh, to my WWE 2K16 universe mode that Ultra was not around for, where Green Ranger was the protagonist of the series. He defeated Adolf Hitler uh, before retiring and became a legend uh, for streams to come. Even the people who were not here for the streams, they know the, the regalia of the Green... The Green Ranger! It's been too long since I did... What was it? It was like... Green... I can't do it. I don't... I. Gunks doesn't like it. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, I know. People are just, uh, Green Ranger marks. I know, Dunks. I'm sorry. I won't yell Green Ranger anymore. That's a different era of my life. Uh, Ultra originally said Shogun Megazord, and I do have the Shogun Megazord downloaded, but he changed his mind to Green Ranger. Um, I kind of am sad no Shogun Megazord, but, you know, maybe in the future. Just not in this tournament. Green Ranger is really good at getting up close. He combo fucks a lot. That's, you know, the gist of what there is to say about Green Ranger. I had to manually get, like, I had to actually play the game to get Green Ranger to hit his super where he pulls out the Dino Zord because he just wouldn't do it for some reason. Absolutely ridiculous. Maybe during Draft League. Maybe. Anyway, good showing, Green Ranger. His revenge will be had. More Shogun Mega Zords are coming. Speaking of more things coming, uh, I, I had no idea what reveal was lined up to be next when I said that. I was just hoping it would be a good one. And I think it's a good one. Um, I don't really need, I don't think I need an intro for this next reveal. I think this one's going to kind of speak for itself. And it's just a matter of whether or not people all like it or not. Here we go. Join the Riot Squad!
I did have to think really hard about what order I wanted to do the character reveals. <laughs> and I was like, I, I genuinely, I just don't know if there's a good place to put the Ice Climbers. Um, but anyway, yes, Ice Climbers are in the tournament. Ice Climbers were chosen. Uh, I was actually really torn. I wanted a Smash rep. Settle it and Smash was a, the biggest thing on the channel for a while. After many years, they've gotten out of prison. Um, I was torn, and I'm not saying any of the characters I'm about to say won't get put in, but like I said, we're, we're really tied on slots now. Um, but in terms of trying to find a Settle and Smash rep, Ice Climbers was more of the, you know, this is the character pick. This is probably the most memorable thing from Settle It and Smash was the Ice Climber Riots. I think they're the good rep for it. Uh, I was heavily torn between them and Marth, considering Marth was the first ever... Or he was the winner of Settle It and Smash Ultimate. Uh, I don't really remember who won the original Settle It and Smash for Wii U, because that was a different era. Uh, but Marth won Settle It and Smash Ultimate, so I did highly consider him. Uh, I considered trying to figure out who the current champion in Settle and Smash was, and put them in. Uh, I think it's Joker from Persona? I can't remember. But then I was like, I kind of don't want to do Joker from Persona. And maybe I'm wrong and it's not Joker. But, you know, if I can't remember who the current champion is, maybe they just don't really need to be in this that much. That was my takeaway. So then it came down to Marth or Ice Climbers, and it was like, alright. Maybe I, even though it would be funny for the direct, I am doing the farming joke already. Maybe I shouldn't go for the, uh, anime sword fighter right away. Who needs Joker when we got? Beep. Yeah, this is a Grillby from uh, Undertale. He's the bartender from Undertale. Uh, Kimmy never finished Undertale. She wouldn't get it. Also, Grillby's in Undertale for five minutes. Uh, he just spawned an assist who stays around permanently. I did not know Grillby could do this. I don't know this character's name. I, I remember the character. I just don't remember what her name is or if she had one in-game. Obviously, the wiki will tell you she has a name. I'm not an Undertale wiki fanatic. He's cheating. It is a two-on-one against Kung Fu Man. Uh, holy shit. Farmer spot dodging go to hell. Grillby's fine. I wanted an Undertale rep. Uh, I didn't really know who to pick. I felt like Sans was too obvious. But, it, you know, it could have worked. Uh, Undyne was really tempting. Reroll encounter. Uh, and then I saw Grillby. And I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. And then I saw Grillby fight. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> what the fuck? And I was like, all right, I guess I got to go with Grillby because that dude's kind of apeshit crazy good. I would like to give a shout out to Grimace. I really wanted to put Grimace in the tournament, but unfortunately Grimace is uh, broken in every conceivable way. So no Grimmies for this tournament. If you're watching this and you feel inspired and you also you can make Mugen characters, please make a functional Grimace. It doesn't even have to be a great Grimace. Just make like a functional Grimace. One that's not like an overkill god, like every other Grimace. Here's Kim Pine from Scott Pilgrim. I'm a Scott Pilgrim mark. I don't talk about it a lot, uh, but I'm a massive Scott Pilgrim mark. Uh, new anime came out. I haven't watched it yet. I want to buy the box out of the books and reread it. And then I'll probably play the video game and then watch the anime with Kimmy. But here's Kim Pine. Uh, it was, I really wanted Wallace Wells. I love Wallace. The Wallace Wells was not a great character, like, design-wise, like, fighting and whatnot. The Kim was, like, fine, and the Scott Pilgrim was good, but I was like, I kind of want to get a little creative. I kind of want to do Kim Pine. Kim Pine may have just broken. Never mind, Kung Fu Man broke her out of it. Love the knives. Oh, that's right! Knives was the original character. Knives was who I was going to put in. Um, but the only knives in Mugen sucks really bad. Like, the AI is horrendous. She, like, barely does any of her moves. She's terrible. Even giving her, like, generated AI didn't help her. And so I was like, okay, it's between Scott, Wallace, and Kim. And 
I didn't really want to do the basic Scott Pilgrim. And then I saw Kim had knives as an assist, and I was like, okay. That, like, that leans me in that direction. Uh, yeah, I was really disappointed. I hope someone, like, makes a, a good knife. This is Leatherface. Leatherface is ripped from Mortal Kombat Project, so he gets a little glitchy sometimes. Uh, otherwise, he just runs at you with a chainsaw, and sometimes he hits you with his hammer. Leatherface is a, is a Spooktoberfest rep. I try not to lean too hard into horror characters, uh, because I know even though that's a big part of me, that's not a big part of my streams. It's more of a Discord thing, and not everyone's in on that. But we, I did binge every Texas Chainsaw... Not binge, it was over the course of a year. I watched all the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, except the Netflix one this year, for prep for Spooktoberfest. So I was like, alright, you know what? Leatherface is a good Spooktoberfest rep. That's same for Sonico, by the way, who I still haven't shown, but I guess we'll get to her in alphabetical order. Sonico is the other one where I watched all of her movies up to Sonico vs. Kayako this year. Uh, and then we double featured Leatherface and... What was the other... What was the other one? Was it Leatherface and Sonico vs. Kayako we did in the same day? Leatherface looks overpowered, I promise you. You can kind of beat him up like a little baby, if you know. Let, get, let's get Miku back out real quick. Quick representation that... Miku is a... Uh, that Leatherface isn't as crack as he seems. He's a little crack, though. Miku Enforcer, yeah. She has a guitar! I've legit never seen her use a guitar before, and also Leatherface just threw the chainsaw at her. Miku's gonna prove that uh, Leatherface is more balanced than he looks when put up against Kung Fu Man. He's still really good. Do not get me wrong. Leatherface is still really good, but he doesn't have very good of a defense stat. So if you can, like, get through his chainsaw, if you can hit him faster than he can hit you, you're gonna be able to take Leatherface out uh, pretty swiftly. It's, it's really dangerous damage. The Leatherface fights, they're not gonna last very long. So there you go. Hello, Jimbo Shrimbo. That's how she got the chainsaw. Wait, hold up. Mimi. No, it's Miku, actually. Sora, where is he? Can't believe they just didn't copy Drum. Miku's kind of hard carried by her side. Uh, Miku's hard carried by the other Miku that sometimes shows up and does a musical performance and stays on screen for the rest of the fight. Is actually like cracked as hell. Uh, let's take a look at a a Kimmy submission. This is a Kimmy submission, Lelouch v Britannia. I didn't know if I was supposed to call this guy Lelouch v, Britan v Britannia or Lelouch Lampen Rouge, because I get they're both his names. I presume one of them is his. I presume. Lelouch Lampen Rouge or whatever is his real name and V Pertania is like his alias when he's got like a Gundam mech and is evil or whatever. I haven't watched Code Geass, but there's, I think that's, is that Geass or is the thing when his eye glows Geass? I presume that's Geass. I haven't watched the show. Is there a bomb in the forest? Oh, there is. He just blew it up on Kung Fu Man. How many characters do I have? In Mugen right now? Probably... I mean, it's less than 100. Probably around 60 would be my guess. You think it's the opposite about the names? V Britannia is his real name. Lompon Rouge is his alias. All right, well, I wouldn't know. I'm just referring to him as Lelouch V Britannia because that sounds like the better name. Bro couldn't put that meter in a better place. To be fair, uh, Cyrano has literally the same meter, so... It's not even just him that's like that. It is what it is. Mathras added to roster win. I get that reference. That's a I I very recently got that reference. I don't know why I forgot his name was Mathras. I was thinking it was Malthus. <laughs> Which I it makes less sense. Uh, hey, we're going to talk about a character real quick. We're going to talk about a very important character. Um, in Petey Piranha Plant. Because Petey Piranha, he was the very first character uh, I revealed. And I, don't, I haven't really talked about this too much. This was a very impromptu decision to do. 
this whole tournament it was kind of like an okay i need to get back into doing streams and stuff i need something to motivate me to put effort in every day uh and so i was like all right i've made the decision same day i get pd piranha footage and i'm like bam pd's in number one because of course he is and sometimes acting a little rash isn't the best thing to do and so I've, I come across some new info, some info I didn't have at the time of starting this tournament, uh, and a decision was made that I am going to replace Petey in the tournament. I have not mentioned this to anyone else. This is a this is a first time announcement here at the direct big direct reveal. I am replacing Petey, but I'm replacing Petey with a better Petey. Anyways, that's the new PD Piranha plant that is in the tournament. So PD is still here. Um, the PD that I had originally, what one was the better one? The one that I had win <laughs> in the reveal video. Uh, yeah. So original PD is well made. Don't get me wrong. It does have the funny vor move where it eats the opponent and swallows them and insta kills them. And I wasn't a fan of the insta-kill move. Here's my Nintendo DS stage, by the way. I wasn't a big fan of the insta-kill move. Uh, but I was like, alright, well, this is the only PDR is. Uh, I recently found a Mugen creator who's very, very good. But not all of his stuff has been uploaded to Mugen Archives, which is where I get a lot of my stuff. Uh, and I found his PD, and I really like his PD. I like it has a bunch of assists, like Thwomp and Bowser Jr. and Kamek. And I was like, you know what? I think... Cause, cause the other PD is also bad. Like it's, it's a, it's bad. It's AI isn't very good, and its move set's not great. So the only way I could balance the original PD was to just give him like boss levels of damage and health, and that made him balanced because he was still really bad. I have not balanced this PD, but he at least feels more like an actual like sustainable character. Lars Ulrich from Union. He's not part of the 1984 Mugen archives. No, sir. No, he is not. I mean, some of his stuff is. Uh, but not this. Some of their stuff. I have no idea if they're a guy. But I like the PD. I like the PD a lot. They make a lot of good uh, characters. I think I have, I have like a King Boo they also made. That's like pretty good. And for all I know, this is on the Mugen Archive, just under a different name. But I didn't see it. I found it on YouTube when looking at... I found them through other stuff. And then I was like... I don't remember what other character they made that, like, led me to go look at their YouTube channel. Where they make, like... They make, like, Smash Season Pass style trailers when they release characters. Because they'll release, like, five at a time. And that shit's pretty pog. And PD's pretty pog. And I'm very happy with this PD. You know, I'm, I'm trying to be unbiased, but just, like, character-wise, I just really like Petey. Uh, and I'm glad I found a better one. No offense to the other Petey. Oh, uh, time for the other Kimmy submission. Uh, Maka. So, as, as was uh, made apparent with the video Thorn posted in the Discord, which also very much caught me off guard... Uh, Thorn's a massive Soldier fan. I knew he was a massive Soldier fan. They, uh, he hasn't really been reacting to the characters very much. He said he kept up, but he doesn't talk about it a lot. 
he was going pog crazy for the mock reveal. He was like way more into the mock reveal than he's even like than in, he doesn't even show that much interest in his own characters. And I haven't revealed either of Thorne's two submissions yet, but like he kind of picked them and he was like, "Yeah, this is what I want." He saw the mock reveal. He was going nuts, bro. Where are they gonna do it? I, I have not seen them hit their super yet. They like miss their super every time. There were two Makas I had to choose from. Both were really good. I went with this one, though. I liked her moveset and her animations a little bit more. But Soul Eater's good. Maka Auburn's good. Uh, I'm going to start... I think I've got a couple more anime reps lined up. And then I might start toning down the anime characters a little. We've got a decent amount. They have to save the hype. That's something I can talk about. I can tease you for, a uh, Courage does give them strength. Uh, I can, I can talk about some franchises that are going to have character reveals. I completely forgot about that. Uh, so without giving away the characters, because A, I'm not spoiling them, and B, I still gotta think about it, I can tell you, uh, some of the characters that will be, or some, some franchises that will be getting reps. Uh, we are gonna have a Spider-Man character. At some point, Spider-Man characters are coming. Yeah, Frosty, you and Mothman are the only people with, like, submissions left to lock in. You have two, he has one. And you both have until the end of December. So about two weeks to, like, put your submissions in. And there are there are some submissions I will turn down now, now that we're getting a bit more, like, stocked up on characters. I've told him the same thing. I told Edgy the same thing, too, uh, before Edgy submitted his. But we are going to have a Spider-Man rep. Uh, we are going to have a Godzilla rep. We are going to have a Pokemon rep. I think those are like the three most notable. There's going to be a Pokemon rep, a Spider-Man rep, a Godzilla rep. Michael's not a Pokemon. <laughs> oh, there's Marcus from Digimon, by the way. Are we getting a Yu-Gi-Oh rep? I'm on the fence on that one, because I would love to do a Yu-Gi-Oh rep, because Yu-Gi-Oh's been very big on movie nights. Uh, it's just, like, the Yu-Gi-Oh characters aren't great. That's the thing. Like, Kaiba is okay, and he's the one I'm leaning towards if I do one, but he's just, he's just okay. And we're, like, real title and characters that I'm not sure. Every other character that would be worth considering is like it would just be a monster so like a dark magician or a blue eyes white dragon which again is not out of the question i could do them but that's more so like i gotta make sure people want that before i spend a, a, one of the few character slots left on that so like i said there's always time to rally behind characters you really want there's always time to do that uh so if you really want a Yu-Gi-Oh rep you know it's time to start making your voices heard because i won't lie I'm considering it. It's it's in my list of back burner choices, but I'm not leaning towards Yu-Gi-Oh at the moment off the my own dome. Maybe look at you. See if I anything right. Yeah, if Frosty or Mothman, Mothman probably wouldn't. But if Frosty uses his submission, uh, that for a Yu-Gi-Oh character, that would honestly just take a lot of weight off my damn shoulders, personally. Yeah, I don't have, I don't believe, I could be wrong. I don't think I currently have a rep that's just straight up more, a Mortal Kombat specifically. I have considered it. Uh, I like Goro. I like Kintaro. You know, I like the forearm lads. I don't know if any of these are characters exist. I presume so. Um, I'm a big noob Cybot mark. Scorpion's always a classic. The issue with Mortal Kombat though, and I'm, obviously Mortal Kombat characters are popular, so I'm sure there'd be, there's plenty that just work in Mugen. Mortal Kombat Project characters, kind of iffy to get working in regular Mugen. Uh, I got Leatherface working after some fiddling. Uh, Mako, when me and him have free time, is going to try and help me with another character I've had some issues with that I haven't talked about with anyone else. Mothman just picks Duke Devlin. I'd be based as hell of Mothman. I'm like, I'm kind of just expecting Mothman to say, I want Venom, and I go, you can't do that. And he goes, I want Guy again, and I go, you can't do that. And then he goes, I want Chainsaw Man. And I go, okay, you can do that one. That's kind of how I'm expecting, you know, I'm not, I, I would say spoilers, but I don't know if that's actually how it's going to go. That's just how I'm expecting it to go. 
Can't believe Ultra didn't pick Karibo. Some old characters that I've seen on the Mortal Kombat cartoon edits page are not that good and feel like a shit post. That's how I feel. That's like, I feel the same way. Because Mortal Kombat, it's like, okay, well, Mortal Kombat Project exists in, exists in Mugen, so most people who want a Mortal Kombat character, they're just going to play Mortal Kombat Project. And, the, yeah, there's still good ones, obviously, but, I don't know, I'm not like... It's like, you know, who's playing Smash Brothers and picking Mario, you know? I'm not rushing to put regular fighting game characters in the Mugen Tournament. I'm not going to say it defeats the purpose of having a game where you can play as anyone, or watch anyone fight. Because, you know, there's still some good fighting game characters in there. You know, Ice Climbers, they're not real. Nobody played Ice Climbers. You only know them from Smash. Don't lie to me. But, you know, that's how it goes. And, you know, again, you can rally behind Mortal Kombat char characters. Get some opinions in. Get some, some hey, I would love to see uh, Cy Cyrax from Mortal Kombat. Cyrax robot form. You played it on the NES emulator? Well, you know... That was probably before you had, like, a job, so. I found, like, a Lin Kuei Grandmaster one. It looked good from the thumbnail, but then it plays like shit. I've had to sit through so many shit characters. <laughs> Where I'm like, oh, this character looks like it could be good, and then it just isn't. And it's not great. But you know what? Sometimes we come across a character that... You just don't understand. You don't know why this character exists. But there it is. It's sitting there right in front of you. And you're like, why, did, why was this made? Why? Who did this? And why did they kind of put effort into it? Sometimes you come across characters like that. Hey guys, I couldn't really figure out a good sound cue to play here, but this character was submitted by Thorn. It's the Blender from Ultimate Muscle. There are certain characters where once I once they, they are given to me and I'm told, hey, you gotta put this character in because I have submitted it to you. And it's mostly Thorn and Frosty who have done this. Um <laughs> they give me a character and I go, There's no fucking way that I can just make a regular character reveal for this and not expect every reply to just say, What the hell are you talking about? And I think Harvest Moon Farmer and Mixer Taite from Ultimate Muscle were like the big ones where I'm like, all right, we got to just, I got to just do the direct. I got to put these characters on there and I just got to go, oh, Jesus Christ. Let me break this one down for you. I haven't watched Ultimate Muscle in a long time. I don't even know if he's in the show or if he's just a manga character. He's a big blender. He's a, if you're unaware of what Ultimate Muscle is, it's a manga, video game, anime uh, about aliens who solve all of their disputes in professional wrestling matches. And Mixer Taite is a giant blender who wrestles. And there you go. Uh, he has about three moves. He punches, he kicks, he does karate chops, he kicks you, he puts you in his big blender, and he shreds you up. And there you, there you have it. There's Mixer Taite. This was Thorin's first submission. He has one other submission that has not been revealed yet. There was an old version of Goro by Fabry Taz, and the sprites are great, but some of the animations look like they were put through a fucking blender, and some of the special moves feel like shit. I get that. All right, cool. We got the Mixer Taite blender move in. That's kind of all I was going for. We're on a little bit of a... I need to speed things up a, a, a tiny bit. We got to get through some more characters. We're about to start running out of time on the direct. So if we're gonna, if we, you know, we're gonna try and get a little peek at all the characters. We gotta start cooking. Okay, all right. Let's talk about Monokuma. Monokuma was ultra submission. I did the Monokuma reveal. I had him beat up Kung Fu Man as with all other characters. I said this is pretty good. This is a good character. I then proceeded to try and balance Monokuma, and I learned that Monokuma 
has an entire gimmick to his character that was not made apparent by beating up Kung Fu Man. And so I'm going to put him against Gigan here, and I'm going to see if we can get the gimmick to trigger. Because Monokuma's gimmick, if he, if Monokuma just wins 2-0, fantastic. I'm doing it against Gigan because I think Gigan's the one that's most likely to go 50-50 with him. Because Monokuma's gimmick only triggers in round three. Monokuma goes full gimmick when it's one and one. And it's an incredible gimmick. And I have I will prob I have no idea if we're gonna see it through the tournament. I hope we can see it here now. Came back, thought it was Polar Bear from AI the Somnium Files. Listen, I will say I tried to get an AI the Somnium Files character. I tried to get Aiba. I tried to get Mizuki. I that's it. I didn't try to get Date. I only care about Aiba and Mizuki, and I couldn't get either of those. So I said, that's it, we can't do that. A lot of things just happened there. I think Monokuma just used his self-destruct attack to use invincibility frames and avoid the Gigan grab. So that's pretty based of Monokuma. If, if Monokuma wins this fight, we don't have a lot of time. I will just exp I'll put him against Miku while explaining what his gimmick is if he wins 2-0. If Gigan beats him here, we're going to see his gimmick. Um... So we're kind of just hoping for Gigan to come out on top right now. So we can we can see this. I don't have a problem showing you Gigan here. Because Gigan is most likely not going to be in the tournament. I'm probably going to go with a different Godzilla rep. I haven't decided on a Godzilla rep. But I'm, I'm not leaning towards Gigan. I'm leaning towards one that would be a better like GCU rep that we're doing on movie night right now. So we got a little bit ways to go. Alright, here we go. We're going to see his gimmick. Now that Monokuma is 1-1. One one, get ready for this. Because he's going to just do it immediately, and either it's going to work or it's not. Monokuma will no longer fight. Monokuma now exclusively... Oh, he tr okay, there it is. He's triggered the Monokuma vote. Sometimes he does this at the start of a fight, but either way, it doesn't matter until he won. He's going for it! He got it! That's it. Monokuma, after he triggers the the vote, he will do nothing except try to hit that button with the hammer. And if you can hit him, it will interrupt you. If you can't hit him, this happens. I was I was flabbergasted when this happened. <laughs> this quality on this is really nice. This is clearly ripped straight from the game and not aspect ratioed perfectly, but I respect it nonetheless. And that's it. And I know you're thinking, holy crap, that's so broken, Monokuma needs to be banned. It's actually, if you hit him once, you interrupt it, he will not fight back. All he does is keep trying to do the animation of the button coming up from the ground, him sitting down, and him hitting it with the hammer. If you just keep attacking Monokuma, he will never finish the animation, and you will beat him because he will never fight back. But if you let him get that button press, you automatically lose, and he will only do it when it's one and one So if Monokuma doesn't 2-0 you, that's it. You either attack him nonstop, or he insta-kills you. It's a insane gimmick. I kind of love it. You can also just cream him. Exactly, yeah. If you just beat him 2-0, oh, there's nothing you do. He's never going to insta-kill you as, like, a last resort. So he's balanced in that regard. Um, let's take a look at one more character before we get into our, our last... Hey, you can hear the alarm going off. Let's look at one more character and then get into... Uh, our reveal oops wrong one 
We got Palico. Palico from Monster Hunter or Feline, whatever you want to call him. I think Feline. I like to go back and forth when calling him the Feline and Palico. I think I normally lean towards Palico. But, you know, I'm, a, I'm American. I'm English. I speak of the English. I'm used to calling him Feline. Is it? Wait, no. What do they call them? Are they Felines or are they Palicos? They're Palicos in the West. That's why I lean towards saying Palico. Because Palico and Palamutes. And Palamuts. A stage teaser? No, this was in the Metal Sonic stage. I forgot to show off Metal Sonic. I realized I skipped him. Also reminds me of Tiffany from Adventure Time. Makes perfect sense. Uh, I don't know if we'll have time to look at every character. I think we gotta like speed run looking at the characters here a bit. Let me do a do a quick peek here. Uh There's not much to say about him. That's like a well known character. I accidentally skipped a Metal Sonic. Where is he? Oh, he was right there. I have, wait, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is it just eight? We got eight characters to look at. All right, let's get one more, and then we can do the last seven to close off the stream. Let's look at Metal Sonic real quick. Where's Fortnite? Where's Freddy Fortnite? I don't think you revealed him. I did do a Metal Sonic reveal. I definitely did. I remember editing it with the Chaos Emerald stage. You may have just missed it. It may have been one of them I uploaded really late because I'd been busy. But I definitely revealed Metal Sonic. Because I vividly remember getting the clip from the the random YouTuber I came across with the Metal Sonic in the trash can. I remember in both are in the same um, Yeah, you may have just missed that character. I want to say he was like 28 or 29. He was really recent. Was he 31? He actually may have been the most recent one. I don't remember who 31 was. Anyway, there's a good, a real thing. We're, 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 we're just rushing through to see everyone now. Metal Sonic was Ultra's other submission. Have I gone through all of Ultra's? No, Ultra still has one, because he did Metal Sonic, Green Ranger, one I haven't revealed. I don't think I remember who your fourth one was, or if I've revealed them. Oh, it was Monokuma. You're absolutely right. I'm dumb. Okay, yeah, so Ultra has one more pick that I have and have not revealed. So it, uh, Ultra's other pick is actually going to be the reveal tomorrow. Um, it was supposed to be number 32. It was going to be the last reveal before the direct. Uh, but I ran out of time. And I had to skip a couple days because I haven't been home a lot. And so his other reveal is going to be the one after the stream. But first, let's take a look at someone else's submission. That's right, missing no break core moment. I don't know anymore at this point. Gamers so base not only include Demon Slayer but seizures now. <laughs> Dude, missing no does have me kind of sweating with his his color flashing. Um, so missing no is Edgy's submission, very recent one. I thought this was a very good one to include as our 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 final character announcement. Here we still have another announcement, but that's our that's our last you know big big boy right there. Um, missing no. 
You kind of saw the gist. I'm not going to put missing no back on screen. I don't want to give everyone seizures. But you saw saw the gist of him right there. Uh, missing no is a good pick. Um, there's another missing no I actually like a lot more. Like, I like how it looks because it uses the, like, cursed Pokemon sprites where there's skeletons and stuff. Uh, but the character isn't very good. It doesn't have good AI. Its moves aren't good. That one has way better, uh, moves. So, you watched Missing No do the Punch Barrage, because I believe Missing No has a move where he imitates his opponent. And so, I believe that was Kung Fu Man's Super Punch he used, which you never see, because, you know, when's he ever gonna hit him? Um, now I will tell you, Missing No is a Pokemon rep, there will be another po actual Pokemon rep. Missing No is kind of like a whole different thing. I do have a Pokemon rep aside from Missing No lined up. Anyway, here's Rabid. Uh, this was not a Kimmy submission, shockingly enough. Kimmy only had Lelusion Maka. Uh, I think Rabid was like a panic submission. I was like out of ideas. Because at the start of this, I was picking the characters day by day. I didn't have anything lined up. So I kind of like rushed in. I went with Rabid. I had him like on my Steam Deck already in my Mugen. So I was like, you know what? This is a good one to like pivot to. Rabid's good. Now I do need to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Who's the next character? Because I actually I don't have something pulled up that I need to have pulled up. Next up is John Rambo. Uh, Rambo was Zach's other submission along with Deadpool. I'm gonna let you guys just enjoy some some good Rambo. I mean I'm still gonna be here talking. Uh, hey, hey, we're get we're about to we're approaching the end here. If you have any other questions you need answered or want answered regarding anything. Even if it's just like a look at behind the scenes, now's the time to ask them because I gotta I gotta pull up the final reveal. Because I realize I have to do this slightly differently. I guess I could pull it up on my phone and type the link. Because I'm realizing now I don't really have a way. Why is Kung Fu Man so sexy? I don't need to hear this slander in my chat, please. Okay, I'm going to have to type this by hand, so this is going to take me a minute. You may be wondering what announcement could possibly require... Oh my... Okay, never mind. He, he's been doing this. You could pro you're probably thinking to yourself, what... what uh, That was a little bit of a seizure, too. What reveal could possibly require typing in chat? Well, you'll find out soon. When is Missing No going to corrupt the roster? Listen, based on the Mugen Archive comments, he actually does corrupt the CNS files of his opponent, but I, I guess it's not a permanent thing because I haven't noticed any <laughs> changes because I used him before I read those comments. Um, What was the most worthwhile character in your opponent opinion? So when you, you said worthwhile, do you mean worthwhile like it was worth putting an effort to get this character? Or do you mean what's the like craziest character? Um, cause let me tell you, Rick, Koo, and Kine are kind of an insane character to both exist in general and also kind of be, like, actually decent. I'm a really big fan of Rick, Koo, and Kine. I think they're up there with, in terms of just, like, what characters am I really happy are in this, I like New PD a lot. Uh, Rick, Koo, and Kine are great here. Um, I love Cinema Roll, I've talked about. The missing no is good. The missing no is good. I just wish the missing no with the sprites I liked had better AI and moveset so I could use that one. Because I really like the Pokemon skeletons. Thank you, Rick, and Kine. I love this. That's the Kirby rep, by the way. If you don't know what Rick, and Kine are from, they are Kirby characters. This is This is the Kirby rep. Um, I was lean, I was torn between them and Prince Fluff, because I think there is a Prince Fluff. Uh, but when I saw them, I was like, I can't believe this character is actually cooking. Okay, here's Sodico. Here's the, here's the Sodico you actually get to see her in action. I need to preface again that this was made by someone as an original character. Um, obviously with still references that you're seeing here. Uh, because sometimes Sodico, she gets a little, a little... A little uh, more PG-13 than you would expect Sonico to get. 
And that's, you know, that's just how it goes. I, she, you know, I, I like to think she got the chainsaw from Leatherface. I like to think because Sadako vs. Kayako was better than the movie Leatherface, she got the rights to use the chainsaw too. Sadako is really good. I, I don't really know who most wild character is. Sadako's kind of crazy. Cause look at that ripped guy in his speedo. Sadako's kind of insane. I'm slowing down some of my talking a little bit because I do have to like very carefully type a link here into chat. She's kind of using all of the moves we already saw her do in her reveal. I know she has more. So that's like slightly disappointing, but that's just the roll of the dice. I think this works. Okay. I'm going to hope I, I type this link correctly. I know this is very concerning that you're hearing me talk about typing a link in the chat and then going, I hope it's, I did it right. Sonico, can you, okay. I need Sonico to finish that so I can look away and, ah, uh, not do that. I should have thought harder in advance about getting the link ready to just copy and paste onto my laptop, but I wasn't thinking about it. Okay. Wait, let's... We still got characters to look at here. To show off. Um... Oh! Shout out to Sai from Naruto. There will be a Naruto rep, by the way. I, I That's another one I can bring up. There will be a Naruto rep. Uh, Sai from Naruto was originally one of Kimmy's picks, along with, I believe his name is Bo from Shira. She was gonna have the crop top boys. It was a really fun idea. I really liked it. There is no bow in Mugen, however. Uh, so she scrapped Sai and went for the coattail lads in Maka and Lelouch. And Maka and Lelouch are still really good. Um, but I like the Sai, and I still have the Sai on my roster because of that. Fucking so rabbits killed Moku Jin and stole his body. What the fuck? They also beat up Pac Man. This is Seth Rollins. He's your uh, universe mode rep. Uh, at the time of my wrestling backlog, which I think is late October, Seth Rollins is your WWE World Heavyweight Champion in real life. He may have lost that at the time of this stream, because I'm not caught up on wrestling. But they, they had a Becky Lynch and a Seth Rollins, and I was like, you know what? I think the Seth Rollins is slightly more better made. And so we're going to go with Seth Rollins. A lot of wrestling characters in Mugen. Not a lot of them are very good. But, you know, basketball players kind of have a better track record of being really good. Shaq's a little pog crazy, you know what I'm saying? And I think, I think we're just about ready to wrap it up here. Um, I don't really have a lot to say about Shaq. I love Shaq. Shaq's a homie. He's a legend. He's got that Shaq foo. He's got mad basketball skills. He's a perfect. He's another perfect. He could have been the professional wrestling rep as well. I hadn't really thought about that at the time. I think he's a wizard also. Shaq's a big one. I think Shaq's another one of my like favorite guys, just as like a character in this. And it helps that he's really good. And you know what? It's this is perfect time. We're going to show off this character next while I, I can do the, the big reveal while this character is on the screen. Uh, the character that everyone voted to keep from Creepypasta is Smile Dog. Uh, this one goes a sh big shout out to Mako who basically recoded this entire character so that it would functionally work because for some reason this character had a zero frame rate. But well, Let me rephrase this. There was zero delay between the frames of its attack, so it would just go insane mode non-stop. Uh, he's still really powerful and just spams moves really quick, but it's at least like beatable and nerfable now. And every, you know, 75% of people wanted to keep Smile Dog despite him only having two moves. So here he is. Because I like to let the people have a say. Don't forget the epilepsy. Oh yeah, th there was a jump scare built into this character. I don't. I have no idea what triggered it, but sometimes this character would just cause a smile dog screamer to fill up the screen, 
and like it would auto it would insta kill either the opponent or him and i didn't know which happened it still does the screamer when he wins so screamer warning you're gonna see it here in a minute um but yeah it would also just do it completely randomly and ruin the fight mako was able to remove the screamer so mako put a lot of effort into this much appreciated i like smile dog it's my favorite creepypasta i wish the character was better but people didn't want to replace it so here's your creepypasta rep and smile dog maybe we'll get dog versus dog what the dog doing got that dog in me and other such phrases and i think now all right you guys you guys want to see a jump scare there it is the jump, the actual random jump scare was way worse and way louder. Uh, I think, is that, is that it? We got one left? No, that might have been the last character, actually. Yeah, that was the last one to look at. How fitting. I may have, I may have missed someone. There's a lot of characters on the screen for me to look at. I think I covered basically everyone. Yeah, who let the dogs out? So now that we've looked, we've taken a glance at all the characters so far. I do have an announcement to end on here. Not of a character reveal, but of something else. Because, you know, this is this is a lot about community. It's about being hype. It's about getting support. You know, I've always said you can rally for characters and whatnot. And that's never been truer than now. Because I've talked about how, you know, I've planned some characters in advance. We're at like a limited number of character slots left that aren't prepared. But I still would like people to have a say. Even those of you that already got submissions, those of you who didn't get submissions, I want everyone to have a say. And the thing about Mugen, if I haven't been lied to, because I've been lied to about this before, I have been told Mugen is Japanese for dream. I thought it was Japanese for machine, personally. I've, I've been informed it's a dream, and that's why this game is called Mugen, because anything you dream, you can do within like a certain amount of realism or not if you're good enough at coding and spriting and animation you know and so that's why i am here for this this last announcement to announce the mugen 64 tournament dream ballot a google docs form i have made which i have just posted in the twitch chat i am also going to post it on the discord right after the stream i will post it on twitter right after the stream i'll put it in my respective group chats as well this is a google docs form uh it should not ask you for your email or any other information you should be able to just fill it out anonymously i did in fact copy the link correctly type in what characters you want just open up the form if uh, i'm gonna upload this to youtube by the way it will be in the description of the youtube video so you can check it there just you should have unlimited characters there's one question what characters do you want fill it out you don't even have to name a character you can name a franchise you can name a series i get what you want tell me what you want list as many as you want i'm gonna gather these up and as we approach the end of the character reveals when i've got a few slots left i've been sitting on i'm gonna look through these i'm gonna see what characters people are asking for what do a lot of people want what do i see keep coming up what do i see people mention that i think is a really good idea that i didn't think of or that i overlooked you get your say with this one uh you can collude with each other you can all message each other in dms and be like everyone type freaking sora in the dream ballot you can do it i don't care uh go nuts now obviously i don't expect a ton ton of people to fill these out as, and that's why I like I didn't have it collect your email or whatever. So you, in theory, could submit multiple of these. Uh, and feel free to, if you submit one of these and then you think of more characters, you can submit another one. But if someone, like, spams the same character, I'm obviously going to realize that's what's happening. Because this isn't like the Smash Ballot where there's a million people submitting. But there you go. That's the Dream Ballot. Oh my god, I didn't show Mako's submission. I completely forgot. Okay, cool. We actually have another character to show as I talk and end this off and say thank you all for showing up to the Mugen Direct. Um, thank you for showing up and caring. 
Uh, Frosty says it a lot. There's a silent majority that really enjoys the Mugen reveals. Uh, let's let's try and be a little less silent. It feels good to feel motivated. It feels good to see people care. I'm not saying you gotta be excited for every character. Some of the characters are bad. But I do know some people are like, oh, I am excited for this, but I'm choosing to say nothing. Let's not do that. Where is this character? Oh, there she is. I certainly will in case you can't find slash they don't have mine. Well, again, it's an infinite list. You can just keep making more. You can keep submitting. I won't know who submitted what, so there's going to be no bias from me. I will just see a list of characters that people are submitting. Um. Ah! Spoilers! Newer memes just weird as hell. Clap, clap, the camera has a laser on us. Did it crash? Did we get a game crash? Did, did Mako's character crash the game? Oh, okay, it was the arcade. Anyway, yeah, here's Toka. This was Mako's submission. I forgot to mention this. Yeah, this character has a roster select menu and chooses an assist to help her every fight. This character is kind of cracked, broken. Um, This is definitely, like, I think this has to be a, a top seed. She also might be a little problematic, but I don't know a lot about the franchise. <laughs> I just came across some wiki info, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> She's from an actual game. Yeah, this is a, a fighting game character. She's also from visual novels, but yeah, she is from a, a fighting game, too. And that's, you know, that, that gives her the, the edge up. She's, she has the powers of both fighting games and anime on her side. And also a literal army of characters to literally come be on her side. She's also a juggle god. I ended up not uploading it. I have a 40 second... Uh... Video I had a 40 second clip of her doing one combo. Just juggling the hell. Like Cheshire Cat Girl problematic. Uh, not to, not to, this won't mean a lot to a lot of you, because most of you will probably have no idea what this means. Um, not to rank different problematic things, I do think if what I heard about her is true, little worse than the Cheshire Cat Girl problematic. This character is basically everything fighter. I can't wait for a missing note to bug out the menu. <laughs> missing note is gonna brick my Steam Deck, and I'm gonna lose it. We're gonna get to day, uh, 60 of the reveals, and then my Steam Deck's gonna brick because of missing note. Anyway, I think that's it. I think I covered all of the characters revealed so far. Um, I sent out the dream ballot. I'll post it on Twitter and the Discord here shortly. Uh, thanks for coming. I hope you've all been enjoying the character reveals so far. I hope you're all excited for the Mugen 64 tournament, which will most likely start near the end of January. I hope you're all having a fun time. I hope you've enjoyed the direct today. I thank all of you for showing up. Atoka, I think we get the point. You're very good. You can tell I had to nerf the hell out of her attack to make her at least somewhat viable. Uh, but that's going to do it. We definitely went longer. This actually went an hour and a half, so I apologize for that, for going a bit longer. But there was a lot to cover. I didn't expect to look at every character, but you know what? People were invested. They want to see the characters I could have All right, I'm going to let you all go now. Thank you so much for coming. Um, But before you go... As it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see, and hell followed with him. There's a man going round taking names, and he decides who to free and who to blame. Everybody won't be treated all the same. There'll be a golden ladder reaching down when the man comes around. Hear the trumpets, hear the pipers. One hundred million angels singing. Multitudes are marching to the big kettle drum. Voices calling, voices crying. 
some are born and some are dying. It's Alpha and Omega's kingdom come.